Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Shaykh Salim bin Fawzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala said in the methodology of the Salaf al-Salih and the Ummah's need for it, he said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, the methodology of the Salaf is appropriate for every time and place. It is light from Allah the Mighty and High. So do not be deceived by the speech of the deceiver and the deviant. Do not allow them to divert you. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala said, La yaslahu akhir hadhihi al-ummah illa ma aslaha awalaha. Imam Malik rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatan wasi'ah. He said, the latter part of this nation will not be corrected except with that which the early part of this nation was corrected with. Meaning, so all of the fitna, all of the trials and tribulations that we face, no doubt we need fiqh. No doubt these are uh, fiqh nawazil, that these are new issues that we also face in this time. But the general rectification for everything, it's in returning to the madhab of the salaf, meaning maintaining that aqidah, maintaining that methodology in da'wah, but using the new means for da'wah. And we need the ulama of Ahl sunnah that are well grounded in the madhab of the salaf to make the ijtihadat for dealing with these new issues and new things that we face. So it's never by abandoning the madhab of the salaf. That's never something relevant to do. But in fact, the madhab of the salaf is always relevant. And may Allah bless us with a class with the bad ameen. What corrected the early nation, the Quran and the Sunnah, and those who followed the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, adherence to the Quran and the Sunnah. This is what rectified the early part of this nation. And the latter part of it will not be rectified except with what the earlier part was corrected with. So we want to deal with the trials and tribulations we have with ISIS and Al-Shabaab and Boko Haram and all the other people of fitna and the, the fitna of the disbelievers who attack and hate Islam and despise Islam and legislate against Islam. All of these various types of fitna that we deal with and the fitna of the believers killing believers and the oppression and thulm that we face can only be rectified by returning to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. Then the Imam said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, Consequently, it is upon the person who wants, to, who wants salvation to learn the way of the Salaf, holds firmly to it, and propagate it. This is the path of salvation. It is the Ark of Nuh, or Noah, alayhi salatu wasalam, whoever boards it will be saved, and whoever forsakes it will be drowned in deviation. Thus, there is no rescue except by the way of the methodology of the Salaf, and there is no way for us to know their methodology except by learning. We should study it and teach it, and at the same time, we should ask Allah, إِهْدِنَا صُرَاتُ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ صُرَاتَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ Guide us to the straight path, the path of those whom you have blessed. We should continuously ask Allah to allow us to traverse this path and to remain firm upon it. This is mandatory. The fair is not that we merely ascribe to this methodology, and we've said this countless times, and claim to follow it. A claim void of proof is invalid. The affair is not that we merely ascribe. This is because Allah stated, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ And also those who followed them exactly in faith. Meaning, they follow them with perfection, and one cannot perfect the way of the Salaf except with knowledge of their methodology, and one cannot hold firm to it except that he is patient upon it. One must not listen to the false deviant claims which seek to divert you from the path. Indeed, this is the correct path, the path of salvation. All of the other paths will lead you to the hellfire except one. The companions asked, which path is saved, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He replied, those who are upon what I and my companions are upon today. This is the way of the Salaf, and this is the way of salvation, which will lead to paradise. There is no other path, and every other path is astray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَعْتَبِيُوا سُبُلْ فَتَفَرَّقْ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and follow not other paths. 
for they will separate you away from his path. This is the path of Allah. And the other paths are deviated, deviated and astray. Upon them are devils who call the people to deviation. The Prophet Sallallahu warned against those deviant callers. They want to lead the people astray and divert them from the way of the Salaf. The Prophet Sallallahu informed us that they are devils at the gates of hellfire, and whoever obeys them will enter the fire. This is the major warning against them, especially as time goes on and Islam becomes stranger. The trials and calamities increase, and thus the Muslims are in dire need of the way of the Salaf. From amongst those deviants are those who say, everyone is Muslim. Yes, but upon which path? If the Muslims were upon the path of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then this would be acceptable. But then, merely having Muslim names, while they are upon a devious path, they are upon the path of so and so and so and so deviants. Then indeed, the Muslims are traversing a path which will lead them to the hellfire. This indi uh, this indicates that the affair is not merely ascribing to Islam, and as we said countless times, uh, the qa'id, the fiqiyah. That the proof is in the reality of something, not in its claim. A person ascribing to Islam cannot be valid unless he obtains beneficial knowledge and unless he focuses on learning the way of the Salaf. For this reason, you find that the scholars focus on Aqidah and its various chapters, branches, and issues. They authored extensive works in Aqidah and summarized works for the purpose of educating people about the way of the Salaf focusing on it and the importance of adhering to it and being steadfast upon it. Consequently, this issue is in dire need of focus and concentration, especially due to the fact that deviation and darkness has become widespread. The Muslim is in dire need of light that will guide him through the darkness, deviation, and ignorance. So this is the importance of the Medhan of the Salaf, is we need that as a source of guidance and light to help us in this time of darkness, to help us in this time of trials and fitna and tribulations. How many people are so confused about which way to follow? They believe in Islam. They want Islam sincerely. But yet, they're distracted by this one, they're distracted by this one, this one says they're on the truth. The only way that we can find and determine what the haq is, is to see those who are really calling to Allah and his book. And those who are really calling to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and those who are calling with the understanding of the salaf of this ummah, do, can they go back to the true evidences? Or is their aqidah, their creed, something that happened 100, 200, 300 years, 400 years after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Did they innovate and come up with something new after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, especially with regards to creed? So if you want to know the truth, it's by adhering to that which is clear. In al halal bayin wa in al haram bayin wa baynuhuma amur mushtabihat la ya'lamuhunna kathira min al nas. The halal is clear. The haram is clear. And between them are doubtful things. And not many of the people are, are aware of those doubtful things, knowing the hukum. It's only ahl al Because they understand aqidah, they understand the minhaj, meaning the methodology of dawah what to call to, how to call to, in which way to call. They, they have hikmah. And this is only from the grace of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's bestowed upon the ulama of Ahl sunnah And may Allah bless us to adhere to their path. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Consequently, this issue is in dire need of focus and concentration, especially due to the fact that deviation and darkness have become widespread. The Muslim is in dire need of light that will guide him through the darkness, deviation, and ignorance. Today you have many individuals who are self-taught and claim to have knowledge and understanding. These individuals have not gained knowledge from its proper sources and foundation. and say they have gained knowledge from individuals who are similar to them, from books or from culture, as they say. This manner of gaining knowledge does not lead to good, nor does it lead to the correct path. It is incumbent upon the individual to accurately learn the way of the Salaf in order to adhere and abide by it. It is mandatory that you display patience upon that which befalls you while traversing this path from blame, belittlement, and other than the, these. You presently hear abuse and criticism against those who adhere to the methodology of the Salaf. People mention that the person who adheres to this way is old-fashioned and behind times. Do not be swayed away from the truth by such mockery and falsehood. Hold fast. Uh, st hold steadfast to the safe methodology because it is the path to salvation. Because of this, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati wa sunnati khalafa al-Rashidin al-Mahdiin. 
min ba'di tamassaku biha wa adu alayha bi nawajid the Prophet ﷺ said, It is upon you to adhere to my sunnah and the sunnah of my rightly guided khulafa after me. Hold steadfast to it with your molar teeth. It's imperative that we do our best to adhere to the method of the salaf. And one thing that uh, Imam Fozan Ta'ala mentioned in the last thing we, we just read, he said that today you have many individuals who are self-taught and claim to have knowledge and understanding. So it's very imperative that we take our knowledge from those people who have taken the madhab of the salaf from the ulama, from the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah, not from just books. It's not sufficient just to have books and read them. Even books and just reading the explanations of the ulama, if that's all you can do, well, alhamdulillah, had a khair kathir. But to, we have to be cautious and know our limits. We have to know our limits. If someone has not studied with ulama of Ahlul Sunnah, they've studied just with some students of knowledge or haven't studied with anyone, then they must know their limits. And they must stay within the realm and the boundaries that the knowledge that Allah has favored them with and function with that level of knowledge. And if Allah has favored someone to sit with Ahl Ilm and benefit from them, then they should share to the extent of their ability. But knowing our limits and being cautious to take our books as mashayikh is something very dangerous. It's very serious. And the Salaf used to say, Men kitabihi sheikhihi fuwaddal, o kamaqil, that whoever takes their book or their books as, uh, as, 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 uh, as a scholar, then they're misguided. Why? Because really to understand the method of the Salaf is talaki ilma la ahli. If you want to really gain knowledge of the method of the Salaf and, and Islam in general, it is it's that chain. It's that chain of gaining knowledge from those who preceded you and those who understand those texts. And it's not an, something you inherit through a bloodline, but it's something that you gain by sitting under the beards of those wise ones who sat under the beards of others, who sat under the beards of others and gained and transmitted that knowledge. And that is the way of the way of the Salaf, the madhab of the Salaf, the minhaj of ilm. And that's the way the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, since the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, up until now, the ulama of Islam followed that path and that tariqah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm and nafiyah, wa rizqan tayyibah, wa amalim al-taqabbilin, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.